Hello guys, this is an update to the push-pull vacuum tube Tesla coil uh, video. So you can see, I actually put it together. This is not the, the schematic I pitched in the last video. Uh, so you can see there have been uh, some changes. I uh, just have the tabs now and the feedback capacitors going from one ana to uh, the, feed, the grids of the other tube. And I'm using random transformers as the choke coils rather than the in inductors. The these measure out as multiple Henrys, so they have a high impedance to high frequency, which is of course beneficial when you are uh, try trying to have a uh, hour of oscillator because these are basically acting as chokes here. These these two are the anode chokes and these two are the grid chokes. So uh, there's less power uh, wasted on the grid drive. Or nearly 100% of the power goes into driving the grid of the tube uh, from these uh, RF capacitors here. And I'm using, as you can see, 470 picofarad, uh, 15 kV, 40 kVA reactive for the feedback capacitors. And these are very good quality capacitors. Most likely the highest, the, the highest quality ones that you can get for, for your money. Uh, in a reasonable quantity and these capacitors are critical uh, for, for safety since uh, if if these capacitors were too short then the, the the tubes grids would basically get destroyed but I also have uh, the inductors instead of a resistor here to because this is a low DC resistance so all the power will get basically shorted by this uh, instead of the, the tube so there are two protection mechanisms here technically. So I'm using the same anode supply as the last coil. I need to throw something better together. And you can see everything is connected with Chinese clip leads, which is of course terrible. But the good thing is because these have so little copper in them and so much insul insulation, they are basically cheap high voltage wiring, high voltage low current. You can see that this draws a lot of current and actually pulls the voltage very down, but still provides much better performance. You can see the new primary I've made. This this primary is a kind of fail because with my last VTDC, it like arced from the taps here. And I talked to uh, Motness or David Pavian and he said, yeah, the taps are garbage. Uh, I agree. And you can see the feedback hole from the last uh, uh, test I did with my old VTDC. It's basically just doing nothing. You can see it's not attached to anything. So yeah, uh, as you can see, the, the filaments of the tubes are powered on. Uh, they are actually running at lower voltage. They're only getting about 11.5 volts from these transformers here. In the final version, I of course plan to step up the voltage going into these transformers to get higher voltage out. That works. So right now they're just plugged into mains and the, the tubes I get, they just don't run as hot and they, they don't offer much remission, but it's still better than the last coil. So I have everything actually powered on. This is my auto transformer here. And let, let, me, let me show you how it runs. I'm cranking it up and you can hear, you can hear it and there is a discharge forming. You can see. Let me turn off the lights. Yeah, there's also a complete mess on the floor and on my table. You can see that there's some uh, parasitic oscillation there. It's probably because of my giant mess of wiring. Yeah, basically everything about this is not optimal. Of course, the giant wiring, the, the giant loops of wires, you can see how much ductance and parasitic capacitance they add to the circuit. Um, so yeah, let me, let me turn the B plus switch off and unplug the tubes. Let me turn the lights back on. This is a schematic so far. 
Uh, I'm using random transformers, but I've marked down the values. Uh, these, uh, the grid, the grid chokes, uh, 4.3 Henry, 7.2 ohms uh, of DC resistance and uh, that amount of inductance. Uh, the primary chokes are actually a bit different. That might be contributing to the red plating of one tube and the other. So, so this this choke here, well, this transformer is being used as a choke, has 7.3 Henry inductance, and this one has 5.7 uh, Henry inductance. And this is the tube that is red plating. So I don't know if it's about this. It might be some other reason. Uh, it might be that the setup's completely unoptimized. That could, that could of course, be it. And, you know, the tuning that also plays part of the impedances of the circuit and all that stuff. So I think when I tune this better, I can get more out of the tube. Uh, anyway, so the improvements to this circuit, of course, I have a bigger power supply. And I've actually forgot to write down here. This is about three microfarads, microwave oven capacitors. So they are 4 kV DC rated from what I hear other people talk about them. So yeah, um, my doorknob, th this is sort of a doorknob, but it's, you know, kind of multi-layer, so that uh, is not optimal. And you can see if I crank it up, the performance increases and then decreases a bit because the components heat up. And when the components heat up, the quotes change their value, so this capacitor probably changes around a bit. And um, yeah, it's not tuned properly. I haven't found the time to tune it. And of course, there are no uh, RF chokes, well, high-frequency chokes. Um, on the anodes of the grid, uh, of the of the anodes of the tubes, so that's something to improve, and uh, obviously use a beefier power supply for this. And also, so these tubes run really hot. They they don't need a fan to operate, but I was recommended to run these tubes with with a fan just in case. I mean, tested to destructions, uh, GU eighty ones where we're literally red plating. Completely, these ones just some slight red plating, uh, and they didn't fail. But I'm worried about these top connections because the glass to metal seal can, of course, suffers a lot of stress during the uh, running of the tube, especially at high uh, at high uh, heat dissipation. But this is basically is um, so yeah, um, because the heat obviously travels upwards. These uh, these connections here, the glass to metal seal. Uh, is stressed a lot during operation and I would feel better if there was a fan blowing over them so probably mount like a fan over here with some you know steel support and run the fan over it uh, which is of course better for, for the tube and doesn't hurt does it so yeah and of course improve the wiring yeah this is terrible and of course we'll make a better power supply we'll use a better piece of wood and mount this all perfectly I might add another filter cap. I might also be getting a second microwave transformer. Oh, oh yeah, this is really hot, so... <laughs> might also need a cooling fan for the microwave transformer. Yeah, and of course I have to remove this and maybe slide this up or down, depends. Uh, of course, uh, this, this circuit really is better for a higher frequency rather than lower frequency. Because lower frequency you need much bigger capacitances here for the feedback. And um, and pretty much uh, you need a bigger capacitance on the primary too, so you also need more turns. But that that can be a good thing or a bad thing. It depends on the impedance matching of that stuff. I haven't really um, experimented much with impedance matching uh, for for these tubes. I also need to research how to do that in RF circuits. But that's obviously a way to improve it when you can match your primary coil to the tube. So you get even more power pushed through it. So basically find the maximum uh, points where the tube and primary will work together very nicely. I might also be talking bullshit. I'm, you know, just an experiment. I'm just a hobbyist. So don't take my word as the word from God or something like that. So yeah, um, I need to improve this. But for the first run as a prototype, it's really nice. I also took a photo of the grid waveform on the tube. Not both tubes on the oscilloscope, but just one tube. And the grid drive is very nice, but there seems to be some weird bump, but that's probably fine. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. I will work on this over the 
coming month and improve it and hopefully get more power out of it with with a maybe another microwave transformer in series series or parallel more microwave capacitors maybe even two microwave dials with a balancing resistor and yeah uh, i'm excited for this project i hope you're excited too and and as you can see, this only drew 800 watts and provided over 50 centimeter long discharges. So I don't know about the efficiency. It might be better than the classic VTTC build. I'm not exactly sure, but I am proud of what I've created. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. And here's the schematic again. Okay, bye.